Hey everyone, it's summertime and one of my favorite traditions during the summer is attending Obon services and festivals. And for, for those of you that don't know, Obon is a Buddhist Japanese festival uh, where we come together as a big community and we celebrate our ancestors. And so this usually is filled with live music, taiko drums, really good food, dancing, everyone's in kimonos and hoppy coats, and we can't forget the shave ice. So for the past two years, obviously with what is happening um, all over the world, we were unable to attend. And so today, Reed is making a, an Obon inspired or a Japanese festival inspired dish. So let's get right into it. Again, if you're new here, I'm Carrie. This is my husband, Reed. Hi. <laughs> and you will be making yakisoba. That's another summer dish. Um, that you'll find like at Japanese festivals and yakisoba means grilled noodles and so what it is it's a stir fry and it's filled with a lot of yummy vegetables you want to share what's going to be in the yakisoba? Well, in our yakisoba today we have uh, Chinese cabbage we have some shiitake mushrooms some diced carrots some uh, green onion some white onion and we're going to put in pork belly yeah we're just excited to to try some yakisoba I promise it's not yaki so we're going to start by making the yakisoba sauce. It's um, not necessarily a, a shoyu base, but it's more Worcestershire sauce, oyster sauce, ketchup, uh, some brown sugar. And we're going to quadruple today's recipe because we're actually making noodles for two families tonight, both my family and Carrie's family for dinner. So uh, we'll start off first with the Worcestershire sauce. And online it said to use the Japanese Worcestershire sauce, but um, we couldn't find it at the Japanese market, but if you can, uh, use a Japanese Worcestershire sauce because it's less, um, I guess, Worcestershire-y. Less salty, less potent than uh, the Lee and Perrins. But um, to counteract it, we're going to put a little bit more sugar and a little bit more ketchup to kind of balance out the flavor. So the recipe calls for four tablespoons, so we're going to put in 12. And I'm a Worcestershire sauce lover, so I am just going to go a little crazy with this. Next is oyster sauce, and this one we bought, um, we bought the low sodium, uh, non-MSG uh, version of the oyster sauce, and you know, we're trying to be health conscious. This is a very salty dish, I think by nature, so we didn't want to add any more MSG, plus this is the gluten-free oyster sauce, because I'm watching my figure, and I um, want to make sure that you know, we have that summer bod in effect. So it's calling for four teaspoons of this. I'm just gonna eyeball it because uh, oyster sauce tends to run out a little slow. So that was 12 teaspoons of oyster sauce. Next we're gonna add in about 12 uh, teaspoons of ketchup. I'm gonna put in a couple of more, so maybe about 14, because like I said, we're using the Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire sauce, so to kind of counteract the flavors, make it a little bit more sweet, we're gonna add in a little bit more ketchup, which naturally is sweet. Okay, so that's 14 teaspoons of regular Heinz tomato ketchup. The last thing we're gonna do is add in brown sugar. We're gonna kind of do it by taste, so if Carrie or Vanna Tyra can get me a spoon. Oh. I'm gonna mix this, which right now consists of Worcestershire sauce, oyster sauce, and tomato ketchup. Mmm. I originally thought that um, you use the Okonomi sauce to make yakisoba, but I guess not. That is incorrect. I do remember though, like going to Japan or like bone dances, um, this is a thing that, you know, you eat during the summer is um, like Japanese fried noodles. So because we added in a little extra ketchup, you can already see the sauce is thickened from the oyster sauce and the ketchup. And it's already a little sweet because we added in a little extra ketchup. So I'm glad I did that and I tasted it. I'm not going to add in too much sugar. So we don't want to overpower and we still want it to have that sort of savory taste, savory right? flavor. Yeah. A little thick. And not too watery. And this is what's going to coat our yakisoba noodles. So we're going to turn our large burner here on um, medium high. You can see I already added in some cooking oil and we're just going to let this thing heat up a little bit. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cook all of our vegetables. So we're going to start with the carrots and this, the uh, cabbage and the onions and we're going to just uh, make sure those things get all nice and soft. We're going to add in the mushrooms next. 
and then lastly we're going to throw in the beef and then what we'll do at the very end is toss in the yakisoba noodles so we cheat and we just buy the sun noodle brand um, yakisoba noodles sun noodles are a great local brand they sell all over the world um, they actually make all different types of noodles yakisoba is just one of them and it already comes pre-cooked uh, so it's in the cold section of the japanese market uh, you can check it out and you can just add this straight in you don't have to blanch it or you don't have to boil it or anything like that it's already a cooked noodle so and one of those is for one serving yeah one okay. of these packets is one serving size if for some reason somebody was watching this and they couldn't get this yakisoba noodle what do you think you would suggest them do well it's just a regular egg noodle so you want to get like a thicker egg noodle um, and make sure that if it's not already pre-cooked that you cook it to a consistency that it's not too soft too mushy yeah, yeah. Um, because yakisoba it needs to be a little bit more firm uh, you're going to be mixing it with a bunch of things you want to make sure that the consistency of the noodle is uh, not too soft mm -hmm. but uh, just any regular old egg noodle will do and uh, should make for a great dish okay so now this thing's um, a little hot we're going to start by adding in our carrots And we'll do a couple of handfuls of cabbage. We could use regular cabbage, but we chose Chinese cabbage because um, one, we like it for shabu shabu and you know, it's got good texture to it. Um, and it's also very tasty. And then some shiitake mushrooms. Almost forgot. Have some white onions here too, so add in about a fourth of the white onions. And while this is going, I'm probably going to add in um, some pepper just for flavor. You can see the vegetables starting to get a little salt. Okay, so we're going to add in, like Carrie said, a little bit of the green onion. Get some color. Let this cook for a little bit and then the last thing we're going to do is add the pork. Okay, so I like to make a little hole. Make a hole for the pork. And we, we bought about a tray which is a, uh, maybe a little over two pounds of pork. So I'm just going to split this up. Add in some pork to this batch. Put it right here in the center. Let this thing cook up a little bit. Now that we've stir fried this enough and you see the meat's cooked and the vegetables are getting soft. Now it's time to add the noodles. Just gonna make a hole. I'm gonna throw in the yakisoba noodles. Breaking up the noodles. Should probably do this before I put it in. Okay, so now we got the noodles in there, it's getting a little warm. Uh, we're gonna just add in the yakisoba sauce. So um, I'm just gonna drizzle some around and we're gonna make sure that everything gets coated very nicely. Okay, so let's start with that. And let's, let's go. We need a little bit more sauce. I think we can use a taste tester now. Let's bring her in. I'm here. Mmm. <laughs> Does it need more sauce? High adrenaline. I'm a like a low on sauce person. I don't like a lot of sauce on really anything. So for me it doesn't, but. Maybe you should try it. Let's try some of the yakisoba.
Mm. Very tasty, very good. Those are perfect. It's good. Wow. It's gonna make a good meal tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed watching Reed make yakisoba. He is such a wonderful cook and chef. And for those of you um, that have been to a Japanese festival before or an Obon festival before, uh, please let me know in the comments what your favorite food is to eat when you go to one of those events. And make sure to like this video and subscribe if you have not done so already. And we will see you guys in the next one.